Shalom. We're continuing in the Gospel according to John. We're looking at the Hebraic background, what the people of his time would have understood. Today we are in chapter 10. Amen, amen, I say unto you, he that does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spoke Yeshua unto them, but they did not understand what things they were which he spoke unto them. So this chapter is mostly about the sheep and the shepherd, and of course this is native to the people groups that even still live there, keeping sheep, and attached to the history of the people. Continuing in verse 7, Then said Yeshua unto them again, Amen, amen, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care for the sheep. And so here you have a picture of a sheepfold, which is from modern day Middle East. This picture is from a video done by Joel Kramer. His YouTube channel is Expedition Bible. I will put the link for this particular video in the video description. It's a beautiful video and I'm sure it will touch your heart. But what I want you to see here is that the fold is built of rock on three sides or three and a half sides and there's an opening and the shepherd actually sits in that opening. He lies in that opening and he is the door. So when Yeshua says he's the door, he's talking very literally about a sheepfold. Of course, the Hebrew people have a long tradition of shepherds. Moses was a shepherd. And here's an interesting comment from the Midrash. To whom was Moses our master similar? It is to a faithful shepherd for whom a fence fell just before dark. He arose and fenced on three sides, but a breach remained and he did not have time to fence it. He stood in the breach. A lion came and he stood against it. A wolf came and he stood against it. You, speaking of the prophets, however, did not stand in the breach like Moses. For if you had gone up into the breaches like Moses, you would have been able to stand in battle on the day of God's wrath. So here we see the picture of the three sides and the opening, and the shepherd himself guards the opening. Moses is known in his personal history for standing in the gap for the people, always pleading on behalf of the people to Yehovah. And there are many examples of good and bad shepherds in Tanakh from 1 Samuel 17. And David said unto Saul, Your servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Your servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. David said moreover, Yehovah that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and Yehovah be with you. So being a shepherd is an important part of David's resume. In Ezekiel, speaking of the wicked shepherds, from chapter 34. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? You eat the fat, and you clothe yourself with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. The diseased you have not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty you have ruled them. And they were scattered, because there is no shepherd, and they became meat to all those beasts of the field, 
when they were scattered. And so Yahweh's solution to this problem, he says, therefore I will save my flock and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd, and Ayehova will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them, Ayehova have spoken it. Now this is spoken after David's lifetime. He's talking about the ultimate son of David, the Messiah, and David himself wrote in Psalm 23, Yehovah is my shepherd, I will lack for nothing. Again in Zechariah 11, And I said unto them, If you think it good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for me my price thirty pieces of silver. And Yehovah said unto me, Cast it unto the potter a goodly price that I was priced at of them. And I took thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of Yehovah. So Zechariah is speaking about a frustrated shepherd who quits his job and gives his notice and he is given this back pay of 30 pieces of silver. Clearly the prophecy of Yeshua the shepherd and his betrayal as it is written in Matthew 27 then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet saying and they took the 30 pieces of silver the price of him that was valued whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. Now, the prophecy is actually in Zechariah. So why does Matthew cite Jeremiah? Well, for one thing, there's an extensive amount of writing about the prophet in in Jeremiah chapters 18 and 19. It's also thought that it might be possible that at one point Jeremiah was the first of the prophets rather than Isaiah, and that's how that mix-up happened. So this past scripture is known to the people, continuing in verse 14 of John 10. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and have known of mine. As the father knows me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. It's always important to remember that Yeshua laid down his life of his own will. From Zechariah 13, 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith Yehovah of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And we know that this is part of what happened. As far as the other fold and people returning, it is written in Isaiah 27, And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which are ready to perish in the land of Assyria, in the outcasts of the land of Egypt, and shall worship Jehovah in the holy mount at Jerusalem. Most people think that this concept of the other fold relates to the ten lost tribes. This is a matter of history concerning the northern kingdom, which is sometimes called Ephraim and sometimes called Israel, and the southern kingdom, which is called Judah. Rather than bring you the citations from the Talmud, we'll just say that the rabbis disagree about whether these lost tribes will return. As far as understanding the history of that better, I'll put a link to a podcast that I did earlier about the origin of the split kingdom, what happened to Ephraim and what happened to Judah. There's a lot of information you can find about that on the internet. Now the Mormons claim that they are the ones who are the other fold. They believe that after Messiah's death and resurrection, he came to America and established a church among a tribe called the Nephites. They say that these are the lost sheep who are supposedly descendants of Hebrews who had fled Jerusalem and journeyed to America at the time of Jeremiah. This is the chapter heading from the book of 3rd Nephi chapter 15. Jesus announces that the law of Moses is fulfilled in him the Nephites are the other sheep of whom he spoke in Jerusalem. 
Because of iniquity, the Lord's people in Jerusalem do not know about the scattered sheep of Israel. Now, people in Jerusalem do know about the scattered ten tribes, and they're even addressed in the New Testament. So people that are Mormons and people that are converted among native tribes in the Americas may or may not be, by biology, from the ten lost tribes, but they have the same opportunity to come into the fold. Again from this book of Third Nephi, And verily I say unto you, that you are they of whom I said, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also must I bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Remember, this is a Mormon scripture. And they understood me not, for they supposed it had been the Gentiles. For they understood not that the Gentiles should be converted through their preaching. And they understood me not that I said, They shall hear my voice. And they understood me not that the Gentiles should not at any time hear my voice, that I should not manifest myself unto them, save it were by the Holy Ghost. But behold, you have heard my voice and seen me, and you are my sheep, and you are numbered among those whom the Father has given me. So basically, the people that are being addressed in this Book of Mormon, in fact, are the same as any other Gentile. They are outside the fold, but any Gentile can come in the fold and hear the voice of Yeshua. Continuing in John 10, verse 19. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. As we have said, wherever Yeshua shows up, the people are divided. And many of them said, He has a devil and is mad. Why do you hear him? Others said, These are not the words of him that has a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. And Yeshua walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews around him and said unto him, How long do you make us to doubt? If you be the Messiah, tell us plainly. Yeshua answered them, I told you, and you did not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So the Feast of Dedication is Hanukkah. That's what Hanukkah means. We see it in other contexts in the scriptures. For example, in Psalm 30, verse 1, a psalm and song at the dedication of the house of David, the Hanukkah Tabayit, the dedication of the house. So here we see Yeshua is in Jerusalem at Hanukkah. There is a discussion about whether he was actually celebrating Hanukkah or not. But he is in Jerusalem, and he is addressing people at the level of their celebration of Hanukkah, which is about the miracles. And so he says, at least you should believe the work, the miracles that I do. He's tying those things together. Continuing in verse 26, But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Yeshua answered them, Many good works have I shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. This is the same problem that was before. This kind of blasphemy calls for death by stoning. Yeshua answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say you of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, You blaspheme, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. In Psalm 82 is where this quote comes from. We'll just look at the whole psalm. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. In Hebrew, this is Elohim. In the Septuagint, this is Theos. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They do not know, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said... You are gods. Again, this is Elohim, 
or Theos, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit the nation. So there are some other interesting things in this psalm right at the beginning where it says God stands in the congregation of the mighty. And this has brought some people to the concept of the divine council, that there's not just one Father God sitting up there by himself, but he is surrounded by lesser beings that he takes counsel with. Now, some places it says that he judges among the judges, and there is a case to be made for Elohim to be translated as judge. We'll look at that in a moment, but The Greek theos is not translated as judge. The most knowledgeable person on the Divine Council is Michael Heiser. This is his book, The Unseen Realm. He did this over the course of many years, and actually it was the basis for his PhD thesis. So if you're interested in reading that, I would recommend that you get that book. Unfortunately, Dr. Heiser went to glory last year. So who are these Elohim who are sometimes translated as gods or judges in the earlier verse? They are the representatives of Yahweh, but they are mortal. They are appointed by him and carry his authority, but they remain under him. And the whole psalm is a rebuke of who they are and what what their judging is and how they're treating others. But when it comes to the verse that says, ye are gods, Elohim, it is always translated as gods. So looking at this word Elohim, it is used a total of 2,606 times. And these are statistics from Blue Letter Bible. I did not count them up myself but they're usually pretty accurate. 2,346 of those times, it refers to Elohim, the God that we would refer to as our God. It's a title, it's not his name. There are 244 times where it refers to lesser gods, lesser divine beings, and five times it is translated as judges. For example, in Exodus 21, 6, Then his master shall bring him unto the judges, the Elohim, and he shall also bring them to the door, or unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Rules for the bondservant. Finally, from verse 40, And went away again beyond the Jordan into the place where John had first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle. But all these things that John spoke of this man were true, and many believed on him there. Until next time, Tasimatai Nayim al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.